It's time for a little bit of intellectual anarchy, where we engage in extreme truth, extreme common sense, and diversity of ideas. How's everyone doing today? So, the roosters have come home to roost. Hypocrisy it is at its highest. The bullshit is so high, I'm drowning in it. I'm choking on it. <coughs> it's that bad. It is that bad. Donald Trump had classified documents in his closet. And Joe Biden had them in his garage. The only difference is that Joe Biden came out and slammed the former president for being negligent and irresponsible with classified information to then be guilty of the same crime. And I've been watching the uh, news, the legacy news, the liberal news, and some of them are trying to hit hard on his defenders. And um, we've seen some pushback because I think the legacy media is tired of holding Joe Biden's water. You know, they're tired of his gaffes. I mean, he didn't know, or, well, you know, we definitely could, could be convinced that he just didn't remember because of his cognitive decline. That's true. You can convince me of that. But he should have never done it in the first place. We got a big problem with people in authority feeling that they can take certain documents that are classified out. And it's not good. It's negligent. It's stupidity. And it should be prosecuted uh, at the full extent of the law, like it would against somebody like me, like somebody like you. Um, if you did that, you would be screwed. But for some reason, because they have no de uh, nefarious reasons for doing it, they get a pass. And that's not how the law works. The law works that um, if you're negligent in um, securing sensitive documents, you're busted. But most of the hypocrisy that's coming out right now is that the Joe Biden and the Democrats were on Donald Trump, on his ass for doing that. And just for the pre current president to do the same thing is, you know, egg on their face. They got to eat shit. They got to um, spin. And nobody wants to spin. And definitely some of the legacy media is, are not going to be put in a position where they're defending, where they were putting down Donald Trump. And then a couple of months later, they're being easy on Joe Biden for doing the same thing. So some are trying to... Uh, present some amount of integrity but it's craziness but here's the thing and here's the truth and let me just tell you the severities of why Joe Biden's is worse Donald Trump as president of the United States can declassify materials and he did that now should he was it smart from he Hit for him to declassify those classified documents. It all depends on the documents, right? If there was like the nuclear codes, then we're definitely going to get him for for declassifying such sensitive documents. He should have never used his authority in that way. So he's not guilty for having classified documents. He's guilty of having having declassified documents that probably should have never been doc, uh, declassified. That's what they're probably going to get him on. Now, Joe Biden, he doesn't have that luxury as vice president. He can't declassify information. He had classified uh, documents uh, in an unsecure location 
Where's his son living there? Now we all know about his son. His son's a whack is a whack job. Uh, we know he has dealings with Chinese entities, maybe governmental, maybe corporations. We don't know, or at least I don't know, on uh, selling information and some nefarious emails that say ten percent goes to the big guy, and it's either I think his father as vice president at the time and as president is the is the big guy, but you know no names were said strategically. Um, so that's worrisome, and he's paying like fifty thousand dollars a month for this house, and Joe Biden on his taxes don't claim it. So somebody's lying about their taxes. Either Joe Biden is not telling the real money that he's gotten, or his son's lying about the money he gave. So there's a lot more problems going on in that situation. But Joe Biden shouldn't have those classified documents. He didn't have the authority to declassify. All that, all saying that, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Because Hillary Clinton, who was the worst offender, who actually had known sensitive information on her laptop and was known to 99% probability th that it was hacked and that information was stolen and she took it out of a sensitive um, to home and places where it should have never been, where it could have been easily hacked. She's famous. People prob There were probably Chinese, Russian spies just looking for somebody in that position to make the, the exact mistakes that she made. But she was not prosecuted. And if they weren't going to prosecute her, Donald Trump was never in trouble of prosecuting, getting prosecuted by the Democrats. It was just to tear down his name. And Joe Biden will not be prosecuted because none of them had nefarious reasons for doing it. They're just stupid. They did things they weren't supposed to do, or they were doing something that is a common practice and no one speaks about. One or the other. But the, all three of them are guilty, and all three of them can be prosecuted under how the raw law is written. But since the way we are implementing the law, those in legal authorities are saying, they're not going to prosecute if there's no nefarious reasoning. We're just going to chalk it up to stupidity. And like I said before, it's very unfair to us as citizens because they wouldn't do that for us. And so hypocrisy going crazy all around. Republicans were, um, were all about condemning what's on the uh, laptop. <laughs> Of of um, Hillary Clinton, but they didn't want to know what was in the closet of Donald Trump. Now they're in, they're <laughs> want to know what's in the boxes. Of Joe Biden flipped that over for the Democrats. Democrats didn't want to know what was in uh, Hillary Clinton's uh, laptop and. And they wanted to know what was inside Mar-a-Lago closet for Donald Trump. And now suddenly they're like, oh, I don't want to know what's inside Joe Biden's. They're all guilty. You see, whether you're Democrat, Republican, conservative, or liberal, you have to come to this conclusion that these people are fucking idiots. People... Run for office because they can't run for anything else. They can't get a job anywhere else. They are useless. The stupidest people on earth are working in government. Are running our congressmen, senators, full board. Very few are intelligent or as intelligent as you. I would say those who have been there more than 20 years are so out of touch. And so moronic and entitled uh, that the amount of respect that the American people give to these people is beyond me. So, 
let's talk about the let's talk about the coming election. I think some of the Democrats don't want to hold Joe Biden's water on this because they don't think he's going to win the election. And in their mind, the worst thing that can happen is Donald Trump become president again. They think they pro they probably believe there's a much better Democratic candidate to go against Donald Trump and win. And that might be true. Donald Trump is very pol polarizing. Um, he ha has only his record of things he's done for the economy and for un unemployment and how he handled the world stage. But he's, he's very polarizing. He, he, he's easily offended. He's a crybaby. Um, he he n not articulate in a way. Um, he's funny. A lot of people like that. Um, he's different. He's a disruptor, for sure. And But we want things to be disruptive, but we don't want things to be destroyed. So, and let me just tell you what, what I think the calculation is. Joe Biden versus Donald Trump, anything can happen. Donald Trump against uh, a good Democratic candidate, which I don't see. I think only maybe Michelle Obama or somebody who's just not revealed themselves yet. I'm talking like the Antichrist or something, but uh, like sort of like Barack Obama, right? He came quickly on the scene. Within four years, he ran for president and became president, right? We didn't know enough about him to hate him. And if you look at his voting record, in the, in the Congress, it was like he never voted on anything. So his plans was always to be president, uh, not to be a senator or a congressman, not a senator. And um, he didn't do anything that locked him into one camp of ideology, of extremism, which was cer certainly smart because he knew he had foresight about where he was going. So that may that kind of democratic person may be Donald Trump, but so far the candidate Donald Trump wins uh, any Democrat at this point, except for Michelle Obama, wins. Uh, well, I don't know what happens. I don't know what happens uh, if Donald Trump runs against Joe Biden, but a good Republican, a good Republican candidate will beat any Democratic candidate. Their record is just too bad. It's just too bad. It's just too terrible. I'm not saying they're going to get houses there, but the president, they're going to go for a articulate, traditionalist American this time around. And as we become more traditionalist and people feel we, prog we need to progress or we fell back in our progression then they'll vote in another Democrat. But rather right now, people want the pendulum to slim, sling the other way. But people are not looking at the pendulum when it's Donald Trump and Joe Biden because there's a much bigger problem with those candidates. It is how their mind works, both of them. One mind because it's old and, and damaged and has problems. And the other one is uh, too much of a disruptor that um, the second time around, I don't know how much it needs to be disrupted anymore. We just need someone who to take the things that Donald Trump did good, implement them, and just get rid of those things that he did bad. Try to unify it. That was, that was a great thing about um, um, Ronald Reagan. He, he, he didn't take shit from the media. He hit back. He stood on his principles. And he was funny. And he was engaging and he was personable. We need somebody like that. And there's a couple of people like that. I think uh, Ron DeSantis is close to that. And I think um, Dan Crenshaw would be a good president. I think those two in the next election can win anybody. But Donald Trump is a troublesome candidate for Republicans. It's not for sure. So this is what I would do. <laughs> 
since the Republicans have have control of the House, I would prosecute Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, and Joe Biden. And I would prosecute them. And the only way they can avoid uh, prosecution is say they don't run for a second term. That's what I would do if I was Republicans. I would remove Donald Trump from the from from the playing field. I would remove Joe Biden from the playing field, and it's not really a, a painful for Hillary Clinton because nobody's going to vote for Hillary Clinton. I don't think she's going to want to run again. She'd be stupid to, but just in case she did, I think you would have a fresh new landscape where Dem Republicans can win very easily again if we take Donald Trump out of the running. And the way you do that is prosecute him to the full extent of the law of the threat of jail only if he does not run for, for president or do not allow him to run for president anymore. I think that would be a win for Republicans because Donald Trump did his, his good and he did his bad and we, you can learn a lot from his presidency on what to do good, and you can learn a lot from his presidency how to do bad. Joe Biden, you can't learn really anything from him. He's a blithering idiot, and he would be the worst result. But I think Republicans should really prosecute everybody, because it says one thing. It says that uh, we take the law seriously, and it's applied evenly to everyone. And that would go along great with the American people. And of course people will be mad that they're going after Donald Trump, but if we make it illegal that you can't take, uh, if we prosecute, nobody's gonna take any sense of documents, documents anymore and that's important. And uh, you wipe, you, you clear the, the slate and you allow new blood to come in. I think that's a win for Republicans. I think that is a long, at the end of the day, a, a, a loss for Democrats. So that's what I would do. If I was Kevin McCarthy, I would prosecute all three of them, get them off the playing field. They're all, they're all shit. And they're all too polarizing to stay in office. It's my opinion. So... Let me know what you think in the, in the comments about that idea. Just prosecute them and get them all, get, get the queen, king, and the bishop, and the castle all off the table. And let's have a clear path for Democrats and Republicans, and hopefully it would be on ideas instead of personalities. Because we had two, I don't know what you call these personalities, but that's what I would like to see happen. That's what I think it should happen. And I think the Republicans can assure their victory if they can get Donald Trump. Because Donald Trump, if Donald Trump's going to be the nominee whether they like it or not. Because if you don't vote for him, he's going to run as a third party, which would guarantee Joe Biden as president. And that's unacceptable. So you either got to go with him or make something happen where he's not allowed to run. Those are, I think, your two options. That's what I think. And it, it just, it's too close with Joe Biden and Donald Trump to be a 50-50 call. So I would just pers start prosecuting all these idiots for taking this stuff. Get them off the playing field. Start fresh for the American people, which... With the Democrats sort of how they're running the economy and running the country, I think it's a win for Republicans. So I just came off a cruise and all walks of life were there. A lot of Canadians. And man, though it was a, a small segment of American society, it's, Americans have it good. I think people need perspective on when they want, want to change things in America like they're bad. 
I saw every race there represented from the American life having a great time, enjoying themselves, decompressing. You know, these things don't happen that much in socialist countries. I mean, we have amazing uh, things brought to you by capitalism and it's very important that these new ideas about economies they may be entertained for a second but the changing and the sacrifices made with such a different uh, economical system is just disaster waiting to happen real people lose their houses jobs cars apartments and some lose their life because when you put people in desperate situations they do desperate things and most often the desperate thing is to victimize somebody else so let me leave you my friends let me see let me look for it right here for a second it's a commercial let's see get away get over here ah uh. Hey everybody, it's James Salazar with James Salazar Media here. If I can just have a moment of your time to talk about some of my shows and some free things I have for you. First of all, on my YouTube channel, I have the Brightburn YouTube Academy where we talk about mindsets and belief systems of what it means to be an entrepreneur. We also have the Intellectual Anarchy Show where we talk about politics philosophy and religion i think they're inseparable from having a keen mind and intellect we also have the james salazar media podcast where we talk about pop culture politics and futurism some free things i have for you i have the bright burn society facebook group here you gather with like-minded people on the same journey you're on on meeting your goal fulfilling your dreams and what it means to be an entrepreneur I also have a free handout, an ebook called How to Be Great at Everything You Do Blueprint. And also, if you want me to come speak at your event or you need some life coaching, you can find both these links in the James Salazar slash sling address or take a picture of my QR code and we'll all link you to all this stuff. So thank you for your time and have a good day. So my. Hey everybody, it's James Salazar with James Salazar Media here. If I can just... That dude needs to shut up. So, I want you to put if what you think about my idea. Whether it should be in the show notes. And this coming year, like I said before in the last uh, New Year. And, and I just want to wish you all a happy New Year. That... Um, you just have to look at the American society with perspective and look at all, all the other societies and people clamoring to get into this country by the thousands. Um, they want to come here because it's better. That's it. All right. There's no other way around it. They come here because it's better. There's more opportunity here. And we're having people trying to change the economy and change how we do things um, because of equity because of makes things more fair, but it doesn't make things better. Equity and fair doesn't mean better. It just makes everybody equally miserable. And that might be a good way to get, get all the undocumented people out of here, but that's not a good thing for Americans. It's just not. So we need to apply the rules evenly for people to make America great. Same law for everyone. Same opportunities for everyone. But we can't and we shouldn't try to legislate the same results because just just not how our life works. And it will never work that way. We just need to get out of people's way that those who are more ambitious, those who are more uh who just have more talent or more physical abilities, that they have the ability to rise and that we present many opportunities by allowing certain people to rise to create jobs for those people who just want to work hard 
and have a house and have a car and go on vacations. They don't have no big grand idea, but there's opportunity for them to thrive. We do that by letting the extraordinary thrive. It brings opportunity for the regular people to thrive. But if you shut down the extraordinary and try to make them have the same results as everybody else, you're going to make everybody have shit results. And not only will their results be bad, the, the people who may not push for a bigger things, they will have less opportunities. And that's just, just a fact. We can see those societies. There's no op more opportunities that come for people who try to control economies. Where governments try to co control economies, there is no more, there's not more opportunities. There's less opportunities. But when you allow the free market to be free, that's when all bolts rise. And it's happened time and time again. In the last 50 years, almost 2 billion people have been taken out of poverty. There's never been a social program, government program, that's ever done that. Capitalism is flawed, but it's the more, most moral economical system in human history. So, if you need your boat to rise, come look at my page with a QR code and seek life coaching. You want your boat to rise above at the right time, at the right moment, taking advantage of those moments. You take a look, go to the QR code, set up a call with me, and we can get your boat moving. Let's bring this boat to shore. Have a good one, everyone. This is James signing out of the Intellectual Anarchy.